And here for some analysis, former Pentagon spokesperson and retired Navy commander J.D. Gordon. J.D., we just heard Leland go over the, the most recent escalation in Yemen. What do you make of it? Elizabeth, thanks for having me on the show today. Well, I think it's another escalation in this proxy war between Iran and Saudi Arabia. Clearly, the Houthi rebels started with a local issue, but they're taking it to the next level by firing a Scud missile. So I think we've got to keep an eye on it. And uh, I think the U.S. Uh, has to do a better job of keeping an eye on these crises before they spin out of control. What would you suggest the U.S. do right now? Well, I think that we ought to be uh, helping the Saudis defeat the uh, Houthi rebels more than we are. And I think we ought to realize that there's a proxy war going on right now between the, uh, the Shia extremists in Iran and then they're helping the Houthi rebels in Yemen. And also the uh, Sunni extremists, if you will, these terror groups out of uh, places like Saudi Arabia. So both of those groups want to control the Middle East. They want to control the world. We've got to realize that radical Islam, this ideology, this totalitarian supremacist ideology is at the core of it. And that also explains the reason why we're having problems in Iraq right now. There's a big proxy war. Who's going to control the Middle East? Who's going to control the world? And both of them see the U.S. and Israel as their mortal enemies. They want to wipe one of those groups out and then wipe us out next. So we've got to keep an eye on the ball. And that's the ideology of radical Islam. Right. And you brought up two things. You brought up Iraq and you also brought up wanting the U.S. to do more. I want to play a soundbite as we switch gears over to the fight against ISIS. We heard, uh, we've been hearing from the administration, uh, but I want to bring up a soundbite that the president said in September of 2014 and get your reaction. Listen here. We will degrade and ultimately destroy ISIL through a comprehensive and sustained counterterrorism strategy. We will hunt down terrorists who threaten our country wherever they are. That means I will not hesitate to take action against ISIL in Syria as well as Iraq. Okay, well, we heard the president say he won't hesitate. We heard the words degrade. Uh, uh, are we seeing that? I wouldn't say so. I think the president thinks we can just chip away at the Islamic State and eventually they'll fall. It could take years. But what the president's not telling us is for every day the Islamic State or Daesh exists, we're at great risk here because they're recruiting people on the Internet here. They're encouraging these lone wolf type attacks and we could possibly face more 9-11 type attacks. So the president is not acting with a sense of urgency. We've only had 3,800 airstrikes in 10 months. That's just over a dozen a day. At that rate, we'd still be fighting World War II. So we have the administration this week saying that uh, 10,000 ISIS fighters have been wiped out. But then we also heard from General Petraeus who said if we're not winning, then we're losing. So what are the American people supposed to think? Well, I think they have to have a new leadership in the White House because uh, even though they've killed 10,000 ISIS fighters, ISIS has replaced them. And even though we've had some success in, in targeting their financing from these oil facilities and we've had some success in driving ISIS from some parts of uh, central and northern Iraq, ISIS just took Ramadi, the capital of Al-Ambar province, and also ISIS just took Palmyra in Syria. So there's not the sustained effort you see. One of the big things that a lot of people don't understand, I think, is that the nature of civilian casualties and the battle of ideas. If you have a lot of civilian casualties, just like Hamas shows in Gaza, you lose the battle of ideas. So the coalition wants zero civilian casualties. That's why Islamic State still has a third of Iraq, a third of Syria. Ironically, the more we're focused about preventing civilian casualties in Iraq and Syria, the more likely we're going to have them here because we can't prevent the Islamic State from killing us here. Talk about prevention. Uh, their social media campaign is also not slowing down. We've got to do a better job of targeting their social media campaign right now. Some of them are even using encrypted means to uh, communicate. And even via things like Twitter or via Facebook, these guys are radicalizing losers. From are we really, reading those encrypted messages? Uh, we're reading some of them, I hope, to the extent we need to read them more. But I, certainly we're keeping more attention to Twitter, to Facebook. But we've got to do a better job of disrupting their encrypted communications. They're really recruiting losers and, and psychopaths from 90 countries. Thousands of Westerners have gone over there, including 180 people from the United States have gone to fight in Iraq and Syria. We've got to do a better a job at disrupting their communications, blocking their social media. And Twitter, Facebook, those right. groups can help us do that. Right. J.D. Gordon, thank you so much. It's scary. Very scary. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you.